Hi everyone! In this Mario tutorial I will go over ways how to customize the Mario interface and getting the most out of the different ways you can access different things inside of Mario. Some of these things might be quite the old hat for people who have used Mario uh, before, while there's certainly some stuff that some people might not know. The first thing you obviously need in Mar Mario is to access the various options that can be found in things such as the palettes. Palettes can be accessed via the view menu, palettes, so we can open up a palette such as the brush editor here. Or you can just right click on an empty space and open a palette this way. Palettes can be docked quite easily into a new window. So for example, I can make a floating window and then just place it anywhere on my screens. Now the thing of the standard Mario UI are the two bars. Two bars are up here, so you can scale those in order to fit things better. You can also hide parts of the toolbar just again by right clicking in an empty space and you will see all the list of toolbars down at the bottom. For example, if I just maximize my window, the color space toolbar is at the bottom by default and now I can just easily hide it. You can obviously reorder it any way you want. One of the toolbars is called the canvas toolbar. And the canvas toolbar is up here. So it holds the wireframe, um, the UV image rendering in order to uh, view your uh, full patch um, and some different other objects. These last three icons are there to change how the different views in Mario are configured. So here we have the auto view. Now I switch to the UV view and to the perspective view. The perspective view by default has these sidebars, which you can turn off in the display properties you get by right-clicking and then just changing the camera mask. While by default, most of the tabs are single view windows, we have one that's called the UV auto view, which has two windows side by side. By using these buttons up here, you can actually make multiple copies of the same view or actually a different view. So if I switch the auto camera here, you will now see I have two independent cameras of each other. For some of you, when you open Mari, you will have the UV view on the right side and the auto view on the left side. Mari by default will only change the left side of the view. Um, however, if you click on the UV view once while you have another UV view on the right side, after this you will be able to freely change your views as you want. When working with Mari, you will be dealing with three items, the colors, brushes, and images most of the time. There are different ways to access colors and make use of them. The first one is obviously by going via the foreground and background colors, and you can easily pick a color here, and you will see on the left side the list of uh, last used colors. You can also access this color selection by holding down the J key, which will give you a color bar. Colors can also be displayed via the color palette. And the color palette holds a variety of different options to uh, set a color value. We have the default HSV values, an image tab where we can load in any image to color pick off, and the gray values here. However, in addition to all these tabs, Mari has some hidden tabs here as well. So we have these two buttons, the add new tab and the spawn floating tab. One of the tabs I use quite frequently is the blend tab, which is not shown by default. So if we just dock this up here, the blend tab can be used to define a value range or color range. So for example, if I work on a, a specular rough channel, I might want to set a, a value range for my roughness. So for example, let's say I do a minimum of 0.4, uh, I pick a, another value here, 0 0.5, and let's just, for the sake of it, pick some extremes. So now I can easily just pick in here, and you will see my color selection on the left side here changing depending on where I pick. So this is quite a handy way to keep your values in check. With images, you usually go via the Image Manager palette. 
So by default, when you open a new project, you will only have the project tab. By using this little plus icon, you can create your own tabs and load in an image in here. So to keep the color sorted. You can switch images and move them around just by dragging them onto a different tab. The image manager can be accessed as well by holding down the L key. One big thing inside of Mari is the use of shelves. Shelves can be accessed via the brush editor. So if we just lock this up here, this is the regular brush editor where you can set your brush settings. And on the sides here, we have these tabs, the presets and the shelves tabs. The presets are the ones that come by default with Mari. The shelves tab allows you to create your own shelves to host images, colors or brushes. For example, this menu shelf here, if I just click the plus icon, my current brush will be added to the shelf. You can add colors to your shelves just by dragging the color in here. And you can also add images in here. So if I just drag this over here, I'll have the image in here. Using shelves to save images is something I quite frequently do because it is a nice way to have a uh, project independent library of images. Images in the image manager are stored with the project. So they are loaded into your project and um, that means your size of project will increase and uh, you know basically they're always there. The shelves only save a link and a thumbnail to the image on disk. Meaning that if I just uh, build up a shelf with, for example, different grunge maps. If I open a new project, I can just simply click on an image from the shelves and it'll get loaded into my project. So this is my way I deal with um, just having some presets or maps that I would use a lot uh, for painting, uh, just having them around. Apart from the shelves list in the brush editor palette, shelves can be accessed two ways. You can hold down the um, K key, which will spawn a floating window of the shelves, or you can open the shelf palette, which will basically just show you the shelf tab. One thing to remember is that because we don't have this plus and X key, there's no way to actually add an, uh, the current brush to a shelf. One Mari item that people tend to forget about is the pie select. The pie selector can be accessed by default by holding down the F9 key. However, obviously you can always change it by going to the edit shortcut menu and then just searching for the pie selector in the search actions. The pie selector comes pre-configured with two tools. So we have the eraser tool, which will erase things from your paint buffer and the paint tool. So for example, currently I'm on the eraser tool and now I switch back to the paint tool. The way you are filling items into this pie selector is by using these shelves. Mari will scan items in the shelf based on its name and put them into the pie selector. So for example, if I name this brush just one and this color two and this color three, now if I open the pie selector, I will have my brush and my two colors in there. And I can just easily switch my colors just based on direction or switch my brush. While it is possible to add an image to the pie selector, as I've done here, since Mari is not unfortunately clever enough to recognize these images, so um, to switch them, for example, in the paint through mode, adding an image to the pie selector while possible um, doesn't give you any benefit at the moment. Mari also allows you to add custom toolbars, such as the canvas toolbar, etc. You can make your own custom toolbars by going to the Edit Toolbars menu. In here, you are able to create your own toolbar. And then again, by right-clicking in an empty space, you can open up the toolbar. And it's been added here, and it's empty at the moment. Toolbars are great because they allow you to add any action that has a shortcut. So if I go to, for example, my shelves, the menu item, I can just drag the brush or a color in here. And then 
switch a brush or switch a color. With images, the um, custom toolbars have the same issue as the uh, pie selector, so adding an image in here, while possible, does not give you any benefit. One way, for example, that might be useful and that I started using is by uh, assigning one of the actions to the toolbar that is uh, triggering the clear options. If we go to the uh, blend modes, we have a couple of different actions available, such as the next blend mode, clear blend mode, previous blend mode, reset blend mode, and the last blend mode. A lot of you might know that Mari's eraser, by default, will only erase things that are in the paint buffer. So things that are not baked down. In order to delete something off the surface that has already been baked down, you need to switch your painting mode up here to clear mode. Mari gives you a shortcut for this. So if I just drag this in here, if I click this once, my painting mode will be swapped to clear. If I click it again, it'll swap back to what I had before. So this is a way, for example, you can add your own custom eraser tool that allows you to delete things on the surface. As a last item in this tutorial, let's quickly talk about layers and channels. As you know, channels that are part of the channel palette can be exported quite easily and each one hosts its own layer stack. You can get an overview of all channels and layers by pressing, for example, the I key. The I key will give you this floating window with the objects, shaders, channels, and layers inside of the channels. One thing to note here is that groups or contents of groups are not visible in this overview. In general, there are two ways to access the contents of the layer stacks of each of these channels. We have the main layer palette, which will switch based on the selection of the current channel. So now I'm in the normal channel, now I'm in my metalness channel, and now I'm back on my curvature channel. Some people will keep this palette closed and instead spawn one palette for each channel. For this purpose, there's this little stack icon next to each channel. You can then either pin it open or dock it somewhere. Personally, I would recommend you stick with the main layer palette that switches its content based on the selection. If we open two different stacks here, you can now see, even though my curvature channel is selected, I'm able to modify my metal channel. While you can paint on items inside of the uh, layer list, no problem, some of the actions you get via the right mouse click are sensitive to what channel is selected. So for example, one thing like the uh, merge action on channels or mer merge actions on layers will work uh, based on the selected channel. So it will check the selected channel for um, selected layers and merge the selected layers inside of the selected channel. Now, if I'm doing something in the uh, floating window of the metal stack, I might still have something selected inside of my uh, curvature stack, which is the current one here. So in this case, Mari sometimes will execute the action we chose via the right mouse click on the current selected channel, which will obviously lead to confusion and many errors. So while it's perfectly all right to stick with um, basic operations in a floating stack, I highly recommend you use the main layer palette, which will switch based on the selection. On a side note, some, all of the uh, extension pack actions that have been added to the right mouse click menu will actually work correctly with um, floating stacks, so they will not execute something in another stack. This concludes this small Mari tutorial about the usage and configuration of the UI, and I hope you find it useful.